Janice here. Welcome to Fullest House First Edition, which is the first full house game to be set in the late age. So all the same settings that hopefully come to know and love. Fewer provinces than normal, so very tight quarters. Uh, all nations, a relatively long game, Cataclysm around turn 100. Uh, and into this madness, we will be taking Vettiheim, which is probably the strongest nation uh, that I've streamed for. I think people generally consider Vettiheim to be uh, probably one of the strongest nations in the game, though perhaps not quite at the, you know, tip top of the power curve. Of course, you know, people argue about this stuff all the time, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of opinions out there. Uh, having finished this game, I'm recording this after the fact, I, I do feel like they're a strong nation, uh, but they definitely have their share of weaknesses. Late Age is the age that I'm least familiar with, but I do know that it has the greatest amount of population. Uh, it also has quite a few blood nations, so generally it's considered, you know, the strongest age uh, for blood nations and blood magic in general. Uh, compounding this, it's also the age with the fewest gem sites, so you're going to be getting less gems than normal, which again makes blood more powerful. Mages also tend to be a little less powerful in this age in terms of their max level in any single path. Uh, though oftentimes they have very wide but shallow access uh, that's often uh, joined with astral access. So at least on the battlefield, in theory, there can be more communions uh, in the late age and still some pretty powerful battle magic. Uh, but ritual casting can be a little trickier. Uh, so that is the age that we'll be taking Vettiheim into. Uh, and I kind of think of Vettiheim as a better <laughs> early age Ulm. Uh, there are a lot of differences, uh, but they are very stealth focused. Uh, so in that sense, they, they do play kind of similarly uh, to Early Age Ulm. After that, uh, they start to diverge quite a bit. Uh, so let's talk magic access first, and let's talk gem types that you're going to be getting. So it's the Late Age, so you're only going to be getting, generally, four gems uh, from your capital site. Uh, we actually get the most uh, nature gems, though Vettiheim is also a pretty strong death power uh, and has decent astral access, but not fantastic. So, you know, two nature gems, one death gem, uh, one astral pearl guaranteed. Uh, and from our magic access, we can see that, you know, we have magic access backing all of our gem types. Uh, in addition to that, we have access to water. So no native water income, but we do have water mages. Uh, the other nation, of course, that Vettiheim is very closely linked to uh, is Niflheim. So in some ways, Vettiheim is kind of a scaled-down Niflheim. They prefer cold scales, uh, but only plus two, not max cold, uh, though I think taking max cold is completely fine, probably even recommended as Vettiheim. Uh, and you also spread cold. I don't think this is quite as strong of a spread as early-age Niflheim. I'll double-check that. Uh, but provinces uh, adjacent to do your dominion will get uh, pressured to move towards uh, colder temperature scales than they would otherwise be. Vettiheim's infrastructure is a little bit of a mixed bag uh, in the sense that with this primitive forts tag, they do not have access to citadels, which is also another defining feature of the late age. Most factions have access to citadels. Citadels are kind of important because they allow you to push out more commanders a turn. Uh, so that's definitely a downside for Vettiheim, though maybe not as bad as it sounds. In some other ages, these primitive forts can be pretty painful. Vettiheim can get access to castles, so it can still get relatively strong fortifications, just can't take advantage of citadels, generally speaking. Uh, it also does not start with a citadel which is somewhat important. However, offsetting that, uh, your labs in forests are half price, which is extremely nice. Forests in general are quite important for Vettiheim. Uh, your priests are weak, though I don't think this really matters. You have access to a lot of death magic, so you know, oh, your banishment isn't going to be as good, but the death magic should more than offset it when you're dealing with skeletons, plus you can make a lot of skeletons in response. Uh, so not that important. You don't have access to a recruitable Holy Three, so you are somewhat limited in terms of your ability to claim a lot of thrones quickly, uh, at least natively. So in terms of your troops, they more or less <laughs> come in two flavors. We'll talk about the Moose Riders later. Uh, but you have your stealthy goblins, which are generally size one, except for the Wolf Riders. Uh, and then you have your giants, which are not stealthy and not size one. Uh, and the giants can only be recruited in the capital. Uh, personally, I don't think the giant troops are that fantastic. I think the main use for them is uh, as quite useful siege strength, uh, but again, somewhat limited, right? The later you get in the game, the bigger the game is, the harder it's going to be uh, to move these giants around. You do have enough astral magic uh, that with some boosters and some work, 
you can access a uh, gateway so that does improve their, their mobility quite a bit so definitely relevant uh, I prefer the hurlers simply because they have higher siege strength in terms of combat they're not really that much worse uh, than these other fellows their protection is definitely significantly lower uh, they have no shield which makes their defense skill pretty pitiful uh, but frankly I, I think the giants uh, of both flavors are not as impressive, generally speaking, as your Vetti in combat. Uh, so I think primarily siege strength, potentially in a really hostile environment, you know, where you're going to be facing some of the strategic nuke spells, flames from the sky, things like that. Obviously, you know, giants have a lot more hit points, so they're going to survive that a lot better. Uh, but if you do end up relying on the Giants uh, for your melee output, you're kind of giving up one of the greatest strengths of the nation, uh, which is the fact that your goblins are size 1, so they have best-in-class uh, attack density, which is pretty important. So they get a ton of attacks you know, per square, and so their damage output is pretty powerful, uh, despite the fact that they don't have great strength. Uh, and that definitely can be a problem if you're up against really heavily armored units. And in the late age, there is definitely more armor running around. So sometimes can be a problem. You don't have native access to earth. So things like strength of giants or weapons of sharpness, it's a little harder to get a hold of. I think definitely a consideration when, you know, building your pretender. Uh, but assuming that the Vedi can connect, they'll generally kill whatever they're up against pretty quickly. Uh, one of the main downsides is that since they pack in tightly, uh, anything that's area of effect, so evocations, uh, a lot of the trampling can be extra painful, right? You're going to be losing uh, more units per square uh, to these kinds of spells and attacks. Uh, also, it just takes more units uh, for you to take up an, a more space on the battlefield. So. When deployed, the goblin armies tend to be relatively small in the sense of their lines won't extend very far. So it's actually pretty easy to get flanked uh, as Vettiheim, which can be a problem. You know, if you have people coming for attack rear on your mages, it's definitely something you need to think about a little bit more with this faction than with some other factions. Uh, so for their troops, uh, they do have a few units that can be recruited in forests without fortifications. Uh, they tend to be less effective, so, you know, we'll point them out as we go through them. They can be nice as very light raiders or per potentially patrol chaff, uh, which you will need since you are a blood nation. Uh, without further ado, let's talk about the Vetti Archer, which, other than the fact that they're very cheap in pretty much all aspects... It's a pretty unimpressive unit. Uh, short bows, never fantastic in the late age. It's really painful. Uh, like I said, there's a lot heavier armor, generally speaking. So yeah, you can recruit these guys, I guess. Like I said, they're very cheap. So if you just want patrollers, they're okay. Maybe if you're up against a lot of dudes in robes. Uh, but you have better options, I think we'll talk about later. You don't have access to fire, right? So flaming arrows is not realistically on the table unless you build in your pretender or get lucky with some independent mages. Yeah, I, I don't think these guys are that useful. Uh, they are at least cheap, and you can foreign recruit them in forests. Uh, speaking of foreign recruiting in forests, you also get two flavors of Vetti Light Infantry, which are okay. Again, they're pretty cheap, so you can get a lot of them, but with relatively low protection, unimpressive skills. Yeah, I mean, if you need a lot of goblins, these guys will do the trick. Uh, one other thing that I didn't mention, morale in general is a bit of a problem for Vettiheim. So you'll note that most of your units are <laughs> lower morale than a lot of other nations, so definitely something to consider. Uh, but that's just sort of something you're going to have to work around. Uh, like I said, it kind of affects... The majority of their units uh, and then the other Vetti light infantry you know if you'd prefer to have a spear there are some cases in which you'd prefer that so again if you just want a really cheap uh, lightly armed and armored goblin they're out there you can get them in forests which can be nice if your forts are busy recruiting other stuff not the worst troops uh pretty similar to Vetti spearmen kind of all the same things just you know higher protection uh, again they are very cheap so you know probably I would recruit Vetti Spearmen uh, over the lighter infantry, other than the fact, again, that the light infantry can be recruited outside your forts. So if your forts are busy recruiting other stuff, you could recruit Vetti Spearmen. They're not the worst thing, though, again, morale is a problem. I do think you have better things to recruit. One of those better things to recruit are Vetti Crossbowmen. I think this is probably one of the best crossbowmen in the game. 
and crossbowmen are fairly effective. Now, morale, absolutely, still a problem, uh, but you know, seven gold, pretty low resource cost, low recruitment point cost. Uh, I definitely make good use of these guys pretty much all game. They ended up being useful longer than I expected. Uh, and again, like stealthy, all of these units that we've talked about so far are stealthy other than the giants. Uh, one other thing to probably mention about Vetti in general is they are pretty slow. So generally speaking, if you have goblins in your army, and as a nation of goblins, you will almost always have goblins in your army, uh, it's going to be one province a turn sort of movement. And that brings us to their more specialized infantry. Uh, one of them is the Herd Vetti. Uh, these guys are somewhat expensive in terms of recruitment point costs, uh, but otherwise relatively cheap and like decent protection. Actually, you know, better than average skills. Like this is starting to look a little better. Morale, you know, maybe a little low for an elite, but it's over 10, so that's nice. Uh, I think it's completely reasonable to recruit these guys. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I do think they're overshadowed by the next unit that we'll talk about, so I end up not using a ton of these guys. One thing of note is they are effective bodyguards. So, I mean, in the sense that they have the bodyguard tag, so they're more likely to show up in the event of an assassination attempt. Uh, and they're certainly not the worst, you know, bodyguards you could have show up, though certainly there's more powerful bodyguards you could have. But uh, potentially a case uh, to be made for recruiting some of these guys to guard some of your mages. They will at least uh, show up and buy your mages some time to do something. Uh, but the reason you probably won't recruit a ton of herd Vetti is the Vetti Berserker. And I, this is probably their best unit, just like standard unit, certainly their best infantry. Uh, and the main reason for that is they get around the low damage that most of the other Vetti units have. Now, they don't have shields, so, you know, if you're going to be up against a lot of ranged fire, you might want to consider the Herd Vetti. And, of course, if you're going to be using the Crossbowmen, you're going to be getting some friendly fire here with your Berserkers. Uh, though that said, you know, they have okay protection, a little low uh, for the late age. Uh, that is offset a little bit by the fact that they're Berserker plus two, so their protection will go up a little bit when they Berserk. One potential problem uh, is they do have to take damage in order to Berserk, and they only have eight hit points, right? That is another thing about all the Vetti units. Their hit points are lower than average, so you know, again, the strategic spells really can be a problem uh, for Vettiheim. So probably not all that much more different than human nations. It's just when you're getting hit by, like, it's always painful to be hit by those spells, you know, if you're not a giant nation or something like that. Uh, but for the Vetti, they'll be taking even more casualties than normal uh, to those types of effects. Uh, but assuming that your Berserker uh, does survive his first hit, then you know he's going to be dealing even more damage, have a bit more protection. Yeah, the skills are not fantastic, uh, and he is more expensive than your average unit, and recruitment point cost can be an issue. Uh, this, If you do want to recruit a lot of these guys, I would recommend taking at least uh, some order scales. Uh, though you certainly, you know, could ignore them and go for some of the other troops, though, again, you know, Herd Vetti also requiring higher than normal recruitment points, kind of pushing for order. So, you know, you could try to rely on just your regular Vetti and maybe your crossbowmen for your damage output or maybe your magic. Uh, so that is Vettiheim's non-sacred infantry. Uh, they also get some cavalry, so they have uh, wolf riders and wolf brothers. Wolf riders can be recruited, uh, you know, foreign recruited in forests without forts. And I guess at this point, we probably should point out that uh, almost all of Vettiheim's units, probably I think all of Vettiheim's units, uh, have snow move. But it doesn't really matter, I think, for most of their infantry because they're so slow. <laughs> like they're going to be moving one province a turn generally anyway. Uh, but, you know, it's another reason that you might want to take cold uh, because, you know, your units don't really care if there's snow on the ground in terms of uh, movement. Uh, it does matter for the Wolf Riders, uh, since they are actually map move 18, so, you know, somewhat fast. Stealthy, of course. Uh, in fact, yeah, most of your units also have uh, forest survival. Yeah, pretty much everybody has forest survival, so, you know, if you were at all fast, you would move through forests more quickly, but, again, you're pretty slow, uh, like, yeah, especially the Herd Betty. Oh, so, so slow. So, yes, he has forest survival, but... No, he's not really going to be moving through forests very quickly. Uh, but, you know, the wolf riders definitely can move like quite quickly through forests, uh, especially snowy forests. So you'll have a bit of a movement advantage uh, on the strategic map uh, for these units. Unfortunately, when they get there, they're just not that effective. I, I don't love these units. Maybe raiding light province defense, uh, but they are a bit expensive. I mean, they're cheap for cavalry, but 
really low protection. Defense skill is decent, but they don't have a lot of hit points. They don't deal a lot of damage. So the bite is kind of underwhelming from the wolf. They are only size two. So again, you know, smaller than normal. Cavalry is generally size three. So you can, they have good attack density uh, for cavalry, but the attacks are fairly lackluster and they're going to die in droves. Uh, so, you know, it's not the worst unit, but I don't love the wolf riders. Um, especially because you have the option for Wolf Brothers, uh, which are, I think, significantly better. Uh, a lot of the same things can be said about the Wolf Brothers. Again, map move 18, so, you know, very similar, pretty much identical movement. Uh, but improved protection and improved defense skill means that, you know, these guys are going to survive longer. They still can struggle uh, to deal damage, right? Their damage outlay is pretty much the same as the Wolf Riders. Uh, and they are significantly more expensive in terms of both gold uh, and recruitment points. I think it was, yeah, home, the double, or almost double uh, the recruitment point values for Wolf Riders. So again, if you're going to be planning on using Wolf Brothers, uh, you're going to need order scales for them. Uh, I suspect that Vettiheim probably could expand in many different ways, but uh, Wolf Brother expansion, I think, is you know, one of the more reliable ways uh, and is the way that I attempt to expand in this game. Uh, and that brings us to their sacred, the Rimvedi. Certainly could also use these fellows to expand. I, I think the Rimvedi are quite good. They are capital only, so especially in a larger game, you're going to struggle to close it out just with the Rimvedi. Uh, they're not that expensive as far as sacreds go in terms of gold cost, resources relatively low. Generally speaking, resources are a lot less important for Vettiheim, so certainly a scale you can think about dumping. Uh, but again, relatively high recruitment point cost, so probably going to want that order. Uh, and at first glance, their skills are a little on the lackluster side, but... Uh, they do have cold power, so you know when it's cold three, uh, they're and they ha also have uh, ice protection, pretty significant ice protection actually, better ice protection than they do cold power. So cold power is going to be improving their skills in the cold, whereas ice protection is going to be improving their protection uh, in the cold. So in cold three, these guys are pretty scary. Uh, add on to that the fact that they have a chill aura, relatively strong uh, chill aura. Uh, this these guys are definitely another reason that you're gonna want to take cold in all likelihood as Vettiheim. I, I would be very intrigued by a non Vettiheim uh, or sorry a non cold Vettiheim build. Uh, probably the final thing to say about the Rim Vetti is they do come with a built-in magic weapon, uh, which is very nice uh, because none of your other troops have magic weapons. So this is going to be one of the main sources of magic damage for you outside, well, your only source of magic damage uh, for you outside of your mages, at least from your national lineup. And finally, that brings us to Moose Riders. I don't think I recruited a single one of these during the game. Uh, what to say about them? They are definitely a strange unit. Uh, you know, you get a moose. It's a relatively large unit, and it Nation of tiny units. Uh, it's being ridden by two little goblins. Uh, it comes with a crossbow and a short bow, but it's not really great for archers because with archers you want numbers, and since they're rel they're pretty expensive. <laughs> like this is a, a very expensive archer, uh, particularly when you <laughs> compare it right to the crossbow. So you could have three crossbowmen uh, and have a little bit of gold left over, or you could have like one moose rider. Granted, uh, you know, the, the Moose Rider will also have a short bow that's shooting, but, you know, we talked about how the short bows are not that impressive. Uh, they do have a lot of hit points, so there's that. Yeah, I hate to rule out any unit completely, but I struggle to think of how exactly you would utilize this effectively. Uh, so that covers their units. Let's talk about commanders now. Uh, they have a Vetti Jarl. Who is fine, uh, you know, 50 gold, a little more expensive than Indie Commander, slightly better leadership. No formations, though, with this guy. Uh, does at least have, you know, fairly high protection, so not too likely to get sniped. He is a pillager, so he has that. I guess it should be mentioned that the Wolf Riders are also pillagers, but I don't think pillaging is that effective of a strategy, so I don't think it's that relevant, but it's there if you want it. Uh, you will probably want to recruit some Vetti Jarls. I think really the main strength is that they are stealthy. That is a problem uh, for Vettiheim is they can't really leverage independent commanders uh, like a lot of other nations if you want to rely on their stealth. 
Uh, and I definitely think it's worth relying on their stealth, so you probably will recruit some of these guys uh, just to lead your, your stealthy troops around. Uh, that said, you'll probably end up recruiting more Vetti hearses uh, because they can be foreign recruited in forests. So I think these are probably you know your best leaders, at least in terms of uh, your non-mage leaders. So you know they cost the same, they move a lot faster, their protection's a little lower, but again, they're not likely to get sniped by some random arrow. They're about as likely as the Vetti Jarls. Uh, their leadership is lower, you know, 60 versus 40, but it's not the end of the world. I think all the other factors uh, outweigh that lower leadership. So I prefer the Vetti Hearse, but again, I don't think there's anything wrong with recruiting Vetti Jarls. Similar to the Vetti Hearse is the Vetti Goad, although the Vetti Goad uh, is a mage and also a priest and sacred. Lower protection uh, than the Vetti Hearse, and perhaps a little on the expensive side uh, for just a nature one. I think these guys uh, make for very tempting thugs. I don't think they're good thugs, uh, but you know, you give them a nature gem and they cast personal regeneration, which is nice. They'll you know carry a frost brand and a vine shield as well as anyone else. The fact that they're sacred means that you know you can tweak your bless uh, a bit for thugging, and there are other better reasons. That you might want to do that that we'll we'll talk about later so these guys i think you know will benefit a bit uh, from a thug bless uh they have the same leadership as the vetti hearses uh so yeah i think these guys are solid razor raiders uh, and definitely uh something that you can use to lead around your units the fact that they're a priest also means that they're pretty useful for uh blessing up your sacreds so not a fantastic mage uh but Definitely a versatile little fellow that can fill a lot of different roles. Uh, they can technically summon in wolves. I mean, not technically. They definitely can summon in wolves. I don't think this is really a worthwhile activity for your mages, so I don't recommend it. But, you know, it is there. They're also a beast master, so if you have animal units, probably you should have a goad leading them around. Generally doesn't come up too much, but, you know, you never know. Next up is the Vedi Gaija? Gigya? Gigidi? Uh, anyway, your main Vetti mage, not slow to recruit, uh, can be recruited out of any fort, guaranteed to have a water, a death, and a nature, as well as one level of priest, and probably that level of priest is the reason that they're maybe a little more expensive than you would like and than what you're going to get out of them. Uh, they are at least sacred, which can be nice. You can certainly consider a mage bless uh, on Vettiheim, though again, I think there's probably reasons that you're going to want to shy away from that, but well, it's not a crazy idea. A lot of your mages uh, are sacred. In fact, yeah, you only have uh, one mage that's not sacred. So certainly a consideration if you want a mage bless. Vettiheim can certainly support that. Uh, they also get one more random path, so they can be water 2, death 2, nature 2, or they can get uh, one level of astral, or they can get one level of blood. So they might be uh, four paths of level 1, or you know they might have level 2 in any of these existing paths. Uh, and that random access <laughs> definitely can be a little frustrating, uh, something they share, again, uh, with early age Ulm. Uh, but pretty much all the varieties are useful, in my opinion. Uh, which is good, because like I said, this really is you know going to be your main mage. Uh, really the only mage, not the only mage. You can also recruit the Vetti Hags uh, out of your forts, though the Vetti Hags can be foreign recruited out of forests. So you'll probably rec be recruiting the Vetti Hags out of forests, and your forts will probably be recruiting your other Vetti mages. You are a communion and or, you know, Sabbath nation, kind of, right? Again, they're not guaranteed to get astral or blood, so... A lot of your Vetti uh, are not going to be able to join those communions, but you know, as you will be producing a lot of these, you certainly can form Sabbaths and or communions or some mix thereof. Uh, unfortunately, since there are a lot of Astral Mages in the late age and you don't get a ton of Astral Mages yourself, you are a little susceptible uh, to being magic dueled. So definitely something to consider uh, with your Astral Randoms, though again, most of these mages are not going to have any astral at all, so they don't have to worry about magic duel. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are old. They're right at the cusp of their old age. Uh, so if they ran them into nature, I believe they will not be old, but they'll be pretty close. So a lot of these mages are going to be old. Not a huge deal, but you know things like burden of time are kind of extra painful for you from a mage standpoint. Uh, in addition to being 
fairly decent at making skeletons. It should also be noted that uh, for a lot of them, particularly the astral randoms, uh, they're quite good at point buffing, right? You have access to uh, protection, so some bark skin as well as moss body. Uh, and then of course the astral randoms will be able to do luck uh, as well as body ethereal. And all this point buffing is more effective than on other nations because your units pack in so tightly. So you can paint more of them with those buffs. It's definitely an expensive strategy in terms of the number of mages used. Like, yes, you can paint more units, but point buffing is still a very expensive way in terms, in terms of mage turns uh, to be going. But it is really powerful uh, because your Vetti are pretty good in melee anyway. Uh, and finally, of note, relatively low morale, which is extra painful uh, on mages. So, yeah, again, morale, just kind of a problem throughout. Uh, not a mage, but definitely very cool, is the Dim Vetti. Uh, unfortunately, they are cap only, and because of the mage we're going to talk about next, I really don't think you really shouldn't be recruiting too many of these guys. They're honestly not all that much better than a regular human assassin very low protection their skills are good but not fantastic uh, really their main advantage is they come with a dusk dagger built in armor negating and will draw blood generally speaking so this is a very good weapon uh, and you know it does set them apart but other than the dust dagger they're not that impressive uh, I love to do assassin expansion and I really wanted to try these guys out so we definitely will recruit some uh, and I think it's reasonable to recruit, you know, a set of them to assist in expansion, like, you know, during the early game. Uh, but past that, like, I think these guys are really hard to justify. And again, the main reason uh, that they're hard to justify is you have your, well, what I like to call cap onlys, <laughs> so that I can avoid trying to pronounce their name. Uh, and these ladies are pretty good mages. Uh, well, you know, one nice thing is they have a lot of hit points, so they're a lot more survivable uh, than the rest of your goblins. Uh, they're guaranteed one death, one nature, one blood, uh, and then they've got a couple of randoms. So they're guaranteed two randoms. They have a 10% shot at a third random, and they can random into water, astral, death, nature, or blood. So you can get uh, death threes, nature threes, and blood threes from these, though that is somewhat difficult to pull off. Theoretically, you can get higher, but I would not count on that. They are at least uh, not slow to recruit, though like I said, you don't have access to a citadel, so you know, you'll know you be producing these uh, one per turn, which is certainly an improvement over many other capital-only you know, powerful mages. Uh, but since they can only be produced in the capital, you won't have an overabundance of these mages. They are pretty expensive. Uh, again, they get that, you know, one level of priest, which, I mean, it is what it is. They, they can bless themselves. They can bless other units. They are sacred, so that does help uh, with their upkeep costs. Uh, and again, they can participate in that mage bless you might want to take. Uh, but these, you know, will be your most powerful death mages, your most powerful nature mages, your most powerful blood mages. Uh, they're generally going to be like the centerpiece of whatever you're doing. Uh, because they are guaranteed to get one level of blood, all of them can enter into communions, Sabbaths technically, uh, though some of them will get astral, so some of them can enter via uh, the communion master spell. And they're just generally useful mages. I think probably the ones that random into water are like the least useful. Uh, they can end up getting fairly spread out. Right? It is possible uh, to recruit one of these that is just one in all paths. Though, the advantage of them is they make for pretty solid uh, communion slaves, since they're not going to take any fatigue from off-path casting. Uh, so you're going to want a lot of these. Uh, also, passable leaders, which is nice. On the downside of things, uh, they're not stealthy, which is a bit of a problem, you know, since pretty much everything else is. You do not have access natively uh, to... Uh, blood, sorry, death earth, which will allow you to forge uh, shade mails, which is how you would turn a non-stealthy unit into a stealthy unit. So definitely another consideration uh, for your pretender. Uh, they do also have vulnerability to shock, uh, which is something all Jotun have. Uh, that's also true of, you know, your giant troops. Not that big of an issue, since you're probably mostly going to be relying on the Vetti anyway. Uh, they don't have any shock vulnerability, other than the fact that they pack in very tightly. So, you know, maybe don't go after an air nation. Uh, at least early on, you also have no air magic, so no real easy way for you to get shock resistance spells uh, cast on your units. 
Uh, you could probably theoretically thug with these ladies, but you know they just have terrible stats. You know, maybe give them a frost brand or something like that, but they're a little too valuable, I think, uh, to be utilized that way. So maybe in a pinch you can, but I don't really recommend it. Uh, and I guess related to that, uh, this is also true of their Vetti counterparts. Uh, they hit this magic slap, which is hilarious uh, because it can shrink units. Now, magic resistance negates, uh, and because they have an absolutely terrible attack, and it's a length zero weapon, it's very unlikely they're ever going to be landing these slaps, and... You know, if your mage line is uh, slapping the enemy, something has probably gone terribly wrong. So, isn't particularly relevant, but it is kind of hilarious. Also, on the less relevant side, uh, these ladies are fortune tellers, fairly strong fortune tellers. So that can be nice if you're taking some misfortune. But again, that's limited uh, to your cap onlys. You know, your other mages do not have that, and these ladies are probably going to be a little bit too busy uh, to just be, you know, spreading them out in your valuable provinces to try to block bad events. So they have it. It'll probably help your capital fairly significantly if you are taking misfortune, but otherwise not that relevant. Uh, they also have a death curse, so they curse anyone that kills them. Pretty irrelevant. Uh, however, something that is not irrelevant is the Vetti Hack. Now, these can be foreign recruited in forests, and again, your labs cost 250 in forests. Uh, and I have to say, initially when I looked at these uh, ladies, I wasn't all that impressed. They only get one magic path, or at least guaranteed to get that magic path. Not true of all mages. Uh, but that's it, right? <laughs> they get, you know, one path in either water, astral, death, uh, nature, or blood. Um, they're inept researchers. Right? So they only have five research, and they're old. Uh, there's really a lot of, you know, things that are kind of going against the Vetti Hag, but they only cost 40 gold. Uh, and they are so cheap, and you can get so many of them that, especially if you take magic scales, and I think these Vetti Hags are potentially a reason kind of in and of themselves uh, to take magic scales because you can get a lot of them. Uh, and, you know, your other mages are, you know, a little on the expensive side, right? But nobody's slow to recruit. So, like, you should have a good number of mages as Vettiheim. So I think magic scales in general is fairly strong for them, but particularly with the Vetti Hags, just numbers is going to outweigh uh, the inept researcher. Uh, and so, yeah, these ladies can really speed up your research. And I have to say that pretty much all of these mages are useful, even with just the one path. Now, not immediately and not in every situation, but the water ones can do Frozen Heart. Uh, the astral ones are possibly the most useful because they can do some of that body ethereal and luck painting. In a pinch, they can also act as communion slaves or communion masters, but since they'll probably be getting hit with a lot of off-path casting, they probably won't survive that battle. Uh, the death ones are probably the least useful, but in numbers, they can actually do some skeleton spam, like raiding. Uh, and these ladies are stealthy, so you kind of have built-in, like, stealthy raiders. It's not great raiding, but it can be done. Uh, nature 1, you're mostly looking at swarm. Not a bad spell, again, for raiding. Uh, and these are probably, they're certainly your cheapest, uh, blood hunters you know definitely not your most effective blood hunters um, but just in terms of you know cost uh, i definitely think it's reasonable to be doing your blood hunting uh with these mages so that covers uh Vettiheim's recruitable units though they do have some somewhat important uh summons so let's talk about them next all right and here are Vettiheim's national spells the majority of which lead to uh, some national summons in fact the only one that does not bring any summons in is the Seath Curse, which in my opinion is a pretty awful spell. Uh, you do at least have a decent number of mages that can cast it, though certainly not all of them. Uh, it's a remote curse spell that will curse a random commander in a province, and it costs three death gems to do this. Not worth it. Uh, comes in at Thaumaturgy 5. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, otherwise, everything else uh, are summons. They can bring in, or Vettiheim can bring in the Sloth of Bears, a number of other nations, also a lot of nations uh, get this spell. Uh, I guess if you really want to turn Nature Gems into Siege Strength, it's not the worst thing, but I don't think this is a great spell. It is at Conjuration 3, so relatively early on, which is kind of nice. Uh, but considering you can recruit your Giants for Siege Strength, I, I definitely think that's a better option. But, you know, if you're hard up, 
It's not the worst thing you can do uh, for Siege Strength. Wouldn't really bother trying to use these uh, in combat, generally. You can also summon Glossos? Whatever. These uh, demon boar things, uh, which aren't awful. They're kind of an odd one. They are stealthy, at least, so that can be kind of nice. They're also relatively fast, which can be useful. Uh, I think I try to use some of these as like bodyguards uh, for some of my faster stealthy mages. Uh, which works out okay. Uh, they are sacred, so there's that. Uh, they're animals, which is not great. They're tramplers, uh, but it costs 13 gems to cast this spell. You get nine of them. That's a little steep, and you have a lot of other uses for death gems, so you're probably not going to be using these in really large numbers, like as tramplers. They don't have a lot of protection. have a decent number of hit points, but they're still going to die pretty quickly. Their skills uh, aren't fantastic, and really the main strange thing is they actually have a heat aura, which is obviously very unusual for Vettiheim. Pretty much everything else, you know, is all about cold. You have built-in cold resistance on almost all, probably all of your units. Uh, but you don't have any built-in heat resistance. So potentially you could use these against, you know, some thugs or some situation like that to surprise someone, right? They're going up against Vettiheim, expecting a lot of cold stuff, and then all of a sudden they get hit with some heat auras. Conversely, again, trying to use them as bodyguards is a little bit suspect. You don't have any built-in heat resistance, and that heat aura can definitely cause problems for your own troops. Uh, they do have a poisonous gore, so they can, you know, deal some poison damage. Yeah, they're definitely an odd unit. Not fantastic, um, but perhaps like some niche use cases. But again, a little on the expensive side. They do at least uh, show up at Conjuration 3 relatively early, so you're going to have the option to summon them, you know, relatively soon. Wouldn't be the worst panic button uh, to be pressing early on in the game. Probably a better uh, panic button to be pressing, and maybe not even panic button, is this uh, Brood of Garm, which gets you these Jotun Wolves, who are really uh, kind of similar in a lot of uh, stat ways uh, to those Demon Boars. Middling protection, kind of middling skills, decent hit points, but not fantastic. High strength, but fairly unimpressive weapons. Uh, they are, again, sacred animals. Fairly fast. These, unfortunately, are not stealthy. So they can be kind of difficult uh, to work into armies if you're trying to make those armies stealthy. Uh, they are also somewhat pricey, uh, though they require nature gems. Though I find that you have a lot of uses for nature gems. Mother Oak is definitely a consideration uh, for Vettiheim. Though you're unlikely to be able to cast it uh, natively without help from boosters. Well, actually, I mean, you'll definitely need at least one booster, probably two. Uh, so if you do want to go for Mother Oak, probably going to need to put it on your Pretender if you want to get it at all early. Uh, but potentially the best thing about these wolves uh, is their fear aura. So I think, you know, that's pretty useful. They are berserkers, so can be a little bit problematic uh, to keep them alive. You know, if they get hit by some stray arrow... They're going to berserk and go into combat and do okay, but again, they tend to die. Uh, with that high strength, they're, you know, decent summonable siege strength. I think definitely better than uh, summoning in, the, in those bears. Also, the bears are undisciplined, so they're always going to run in and die in melee, whereas at least these guys are less likely to do so. Uh, so if you have the nature gems to spare, I think this is a reasonable summon. And of course, again, being sacred, you know, if you can throw them a bone out of your bless. They certainly won't mind that. Uh, they show up at Conjuration 4, so again, relatively early, uh, a panic button you could potentially uh, press. Not early uh, is the Dwarf of Four Directions, so that's Conjuration 8, and you can summon like four of these dwarves. If you summon all of them, uh, was it like, yeah, Perpetual Storm and Darkness? Probably not a great idea. Uh, you know, you are somewhat gold intensive, so Darkness isn't going to be great for you. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't really see a situation, maybe if you build for it, uh, but again, it's Conjuration 8, so this is a fairly late spell. Uh, also, completely uh, off-nation paths. You need to be uh, Air 4, Earth 3, so you know, this is definitely something that you're going to have to cast off your Pretender. It's a lot of air gems required. You don't have air gems, like, natively. You don't have any air mages natively. Uh, so, you know, the dwarves that you get are definitely, like, useful casters, you know, including uh, a lot of paths that, like, you don't really have. So, you know, I guess if you get the option to do it, you could summon some of them in, but 
probably not really going to be too relevant uh, for Vettiheim, I think, in you know most normal games. However, uh, some spells that I do think are definitely relevant uh, for Vettiheim in most games are Illwinter and Winter's Call. So Illwinter is a global. You get it at blood 6. Uh, you need to be blood 5, water 3. You know, With the right boosters and the right randoms, you could probably cast this uh, with your own mages, but probably something you want to build into your pretender if you want to go this route rather than uh, playing the random magic access roulette with your cap only mages uh, it is a blood global and since you know it's more it's easier to get blood slaves it's definitely an easier global uh, to put up and keep up uh, as far as global effects go it's a bit on the lackluster side by itself uh, so Affects the entire world, provinces are going to get colder, and that's probably the you know, most useful effect for you. Uh, everybody has chance for unrest, which you know isn't great for you, though again, you tend to like t to prefer order scales, so unrest is probably a little less bad for you than for other people, but it's not great. Uh, there's random attacks in cold provinces. I'll have to double check. I don't actually remember if this also affects you, uh, but obviously... It's very likely you have cold provinces, so this could be not great, and generally the attacks aren't super effective, so this is sort of incidental. Uh, you cannot actually recruit Nephil Giants, because uh, you're not technically a Jotun nation. However, uh, this, when you have Illwinter up, it allows you to cast uh, Winter's Call. Well, I, guess, I think you can always cast Winter's Call, but it won't have any effect if Illwinter is not up, so wouldn't recommend that, because that would be... 86 blood slaves that you'd be wasting, uh, but assuming that Illwinter is up, you'll get a Nephil Jarl. Uh, and Nephil Jarls are you know, one of the preeminent uh, super combatants of Dominions in general. They generally uh, come from the early age. Uh, Nephilheim can recruit at least a version of these guys normally. Uh, you have to summon them in, but I mean they're just as effective, if not more so, in the late age uh, than in the early age. And these guys are really the main reason that you might want to consider, you know, some sort of super combatant and or thug bless. Now, I do think you need to be a bit careful about this. Both of these spells come at blood six again, so you know, not that high in the research tree, but you're also not going to have it immediately. So I think you know, completely tailoring your bless to these fellows is a little on the dangerous side. Uh, but again, luckily, you know, a lot of your sacred units, I think, will benefit from a lot of the things that are also going to benefit Nephil Jarls. Uh, and these fellows are definitely going to be your best access uh, to water magic, right? So they're water three, death two, they're level two priests, which, so they're your best priests, but definitely not the reason you're going to be recruiting them. They can at least bless themselves. Uh, they are sacred, of course, that's why you would care about uh, your, your bless with them. Uh, they get they're guaranteed one random, and they have a 10% chance at another random. Uh, they can random into air, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think if you do get a hold of any air gems, uh, air empowering your air randoms, I think is definitely a good idea. It will allow them to cloud trapeze, so you'll have a uh, magic phase answer. You don't really have much in the way of magic phase answers natively. Uh, your cap onlys, some of them can teleport with some booster support but those are generally going to be pretty valuable randoms so you're not really going to be wanting to risk them in like magic phase answers to thugs generally speaking uh, now as useful and powerful as Nephil Jarls are I think you certainly could make an argument that maybe not worth the trouble uh, and to you know just go for vanilla blood summons uh, the vampire commanders of course are very strong and they are immortal. <laughs> Nephil Jarls are not immortal, so if they get killed, that's it. Uh, they're not going to respawn for you. So I certainly could see an argument uh, for ignoring these fellows as you know, just too much effort and you know, not effective enough. But I do think they offer uh, some useful tools that you wouldn't have otherwise, and they're very thematic. So you know, I think they're definitely a lot of fun uh, to play with. Uh, so that's Vettiheim, as I understand them. Next time, uh, we'll talk about the Pretender that I've gone with, and maybe a bit more in terms of the you know magic research strategies and things that you might try to do uh, with Vettiheim.